All right, we'd like to welcome you into the Friday main event. This is our 3A region preview show. Lee, we've already had a couple of shows. We covered 1A, 2A, on to 3A, which is traditionally dominated by Alcoa. Correct. So um, probably not not a lot of surprises here as who we're going to go with to win this class. But uh, it's it's going to be competitive this year. Yeah, on the way over here, I was thinking about, <laughs> we always kid about uh, Alcoa having a permanent hotel room in Cookville. <laughs> well, I wonder if they booked five years in it, you know, two, three years in advance in, in Chattanooga. Uh, Chattanooga. Yeah, I'm sure they have, <laughs> no doubt. I know I know. I went on and booked mine, so we'll, we'll be there regardless of, of who else is there. But, uh, yeah, 3A over the last several years has been uh, – Gary Rankin and the rest. So correct. Uh, we'll go ahead and see uh, how we we feel everything's going to play out this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, uh, I'm Mike Mulder and he is Lee Teat, and uh, we are the Friday Man Event 3A edition of our Region Previews Lee. And I guess we'll go ahead and jump right in. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Uh, 3A this year, <clears throat> I think it remains 47 teams. Lee, that's, that's probably the only. I think the only classification that, uh, you know, wasn't any change in size. Correct. Uh, they remain 47. I think 19 of these 47 teams, Lee, are going to be playing in a different region than, than last year, whether it's a different 3A region or well, we got some teams that moved up, some that moved down. That's but right. a total of 19 of these teams are going to have all new opponents this year for region play. Yeah, TWS double, day, double A did a realignment. And uh, I think for the most part it's better. Yeah, I do too, and I agree with you. You mentioned on one of the earlier shows, I thought for the most part it's going to be a little more travel friendly, yes. I think, especially over in West Tennessee. You know, teams seem to be a little more spread out over there, and I thought they did a better job of aligning regions in the West Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, East Tennessee, not so much. I think it's a little more populated, probably not as big an issue. Uh, so you didn't see a lot of movement. I don't think as much movement in the East. However, uh, there are only 22 teams in, on the east side of the bracket this year as opposed to 25. So, right. uh, got a little lighter in numbers on the east, a little heavier on, on the numbers in the west That's right. here in 3A. All right, Lee, starting with uh, Region 1, uh, this is one of the regions that lowered. Uh, they went from 16s to 5 teams. They did lose uh, North Green. Uh, I, I, I think this is going to be a tight region. You and I were talking about this before we went on right. there. Uh, I would have to put the Black Knights at Chucky Doak uh, – Probably the favorite. However, they're not, they're not a heavy favorite in this region. No, I don't think so either. I think this region's up for grabs. To be honest with you, the top two, potentially top three spots. Yeah. I don't like you said. I don't have a good warm fuzzy about an odds on favorite here. Yeah. And of course, this region did get swept by region two in the mm-hmm. postseason last year. Of those uh, teams, I think uh, Chucky Doak did have the, the closest outcome, forty-three to forty-two. They lost to Kingston mm-hmm. there in the first round. Got some pretty good talent back, though, right, Lee? Yeah, they got Carlos Demas back at uh, offensive lineman, Nathan Norton, offensive lineman. Uh, Barner's back, senior wide receiver. Uh, senior linebacker and Colton Smith, Dylan Shelton, and then uh, Will Garber. So they got a lot of senior and junior leadership, upperclassmen leadership coming back. So I expect them to be, you know, by what they were last year. Yeah. And uh, Unicoi County did get shut out by GP there in the first round. But, uh, you know, the AD over there does a real good job mm-hmm. of, of uh, sending us info, stats every every week. We appreciate that. The Blue Devils, I think they'll be battling uh, Lee for that second spot with uh, Claiborne County. Right. Uh, however, uh, any of these three I, can't, I think could potentially, you know, win the region this That's year. That's right. How the ball and, and, and Johnson County is, is, is traditionally the dominant team in this region. They've won this region several years in the, mm-hmm. in the past decade, so you can't count them out either. That's why I say this region is probably more wide open than any other region, I think, uh, in, in 3A. I think so, too. It's just, I don't have an odds-on favorite. Yeah. I think if you was looking at records from uh, last season, you would you would probably look at Claiborne County, but I think Chucky Doak, Unicoi County can make a push. Yeah, I agree with you, Lee. Uh, Unicoi County does have uh, Swinehart back at tackle. Uh, mm-hmm. Bennett is, is listed as an athlete. He's only a sophomore. He's back. Edwards at running back. Samuel Berry uh, split back. And then you got Andrew Fagan, uh, big guard. He's uh, he's also a young one. He's sophomore. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of talent back for Unicoi County, along with Claiborne County, uh, Nathan Medlin. Uh, he's, he's got a pretty good squad headed back into this season. Lee, the Bulldogs. Nine and two, as you mentioned last year, fell to Pigeon Forge in the uh, first round. 
got some talent back. That's right. They got Lester back at uh, sen uh, senior uh, corner. Sakowski, excuse me, uh, tight end, senior coming back. Madison Gale is a wide receiver that's coming back. And then Eversol and Brown are back. You know, their uh, out-of-region schedule concerns me a bit. Mm -hmm. But – I fully not just, not real stout, is yeah, it? Yeah, I fully – that might be hurting them when they get to the playoff time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Unaka, Granger, Cumberland Gap, uh, Union County, and uh, Hancock County among some of the teams that will be playing out of region. Right. Uh, but, you, you know, uh, potentially you get uh, you get a good record. They got a good record last year playing that uh, weaker. But, you know, you and I are on the same page with that. I don't know that that helps you when it comes to postseason. Uh, picking up those non-region wins over easier teams. Especially in Region 2. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Johnson County, uh, Lee, with the Longhorns, we, we project them to be a playoff team. Uh, exactly which uh, position they'll have, we don't know. Uh, they were shut out by Alco in the first round last year as the four seed. Uh, I think they potentially move up above that four seed this year, but uh, it's hard to say. This this region here is tough to predict. I agree. Uh, you know, they've got uh, Neely back at wide receiver, Stout at tackle, uh, Gavin Wilson, uh, defensive end mm -hmm. senior, leads the way for them uh, on that line. Yep. And then you've got Wes Green, uh, Scotty Varan, uh, after his, after one year there, three and five, one and three, the Eagles. Uh, thoughts? Any chance of moving up? Uh, I don't know, man. I know they got you know a lot of juniors and seniors coming back. Uh, Daniels, uh, Dawson Daniels, the quarterback's a sophomore, and Brax Braxley Britton is a quarterback listed as a sophomore. So that's kind of concerning when you got two sophomores competing right. uh, against some what we talked about the earlier, the other four teams. Like a, a lot of senior leadership coming back, so right. that's a little bit of, of a concern for me. But. Mm -hmm. Uh man, this they this got Church and Turner at receivers, so they should have and and Valentine, so they should have some uh, some good talent to throw, throw the ball to. Throw too. the ball too, that's correct. Uh, this like I said, this region is kind of to me wide open. Wide open, Mister T. I would agree with you. I don't really have a real firm uh, opinion on this one as far as who's going to take the one seed. What I do know is uh, they're going <laughs> to they're going to be. Some tough uh, first round games they're going to have to face. Absolutely. And I think uh, you definitely don't want to be in those bottom two spots because you're probably going to be contending with uh, obviously a, a tough Alcoa team. We're moving on to Region Two now. Region Two uh, lost Scott County, lost mm -hmm. Kingston. They picked up Union County, so uh, they'll be dropping from a seven team uh, region down to a six team this right. year. Lee Alcoa, talk talk about Gary Rankin and Alcoa a minute. Well. Need not say no more than Caden Buckles. Man, I like that kid. Uh, we interviewed him, you know, last year after the title game. He had a great performance, solid. He's a senior. He's gotten a year more mature, which that's hard to imagine a more yeah. mature kid than, <laughs> than he, how he handled himself last year. He was impressive. Uh, but there's no – I mean, there's no shortage of talent at Alcoa. And I think Coach Rankin is on to something. And his out of, out of region – you know, schedule is Maryville, at West, and Cookville. So that's a 6A. What is that, a 5 or a 6 and another 6? Yeah, yeah, West is 5. Yeah, you're exactly so right. he's got three teams he's playing up against, and uh, all three, I think, are solid competition. Um, we've got Lance Williams back, Salter at tailback, Jordan Harris back at the tailback, a sophomore running back at Elijah Cannon. That's you just keep going, you know, going down the list. I was really impressed with you, and you mentioned Caden Buckles in that postseason game. You know, he, he mentioned that uh, Milan in that first half was doing a pretty good job of stopping them up front. And uh, the coaches, uh, you know, he, he, he went and said, hey, you know, put the ball in my hands, let me sling it around a little bit. And, uh, man, he had a great game there in Cooble. And I think I expect big things out of him. We told him, you know, you keep playing like – he said he didn't have any, any college interest, if you remember. And I told him, I said, son, you keep playing like that and they'll come to you next year. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I was a, <clears throat> any any level college, I'd be looking at the kid just for his leadership abilities. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's a t consummate team player. I can't say enough good about him. Interesting thing for me this year is going to be see how Alcoa's defense is. Yeah. 
They did. They lost a lot of players, lost off, that players off the defensive side of the ball, and they were stout last year. Yes, so they were. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, Gatlinburg, Pittman, Lee, the Highlanders uh, finished second and uh, lost uh, Derek Ring. I think he's down in Mississippi now. Took a job in Mississippi. Uh, I can't, you know, I, and I tweeted that out at the time. I, I couldn't really blame him for that. Uh, knowing you got to go into every season uh, facing Alcoa, uh, it's a tough, it's a tall order. Well, I mean, he I, mean did. I don't, I don't, th- I'm not an advocate for running from competition, but uh, you know, Alcoa is a whole different level. Well, that that was a, he did an outstanding job at GP. Man. Oh yeah, he did. Thirty-one and seventeen, four in uh, four years. Last year he was ten and three, five and one in the region. Of course, you know you're going to meet Alcoa in the quarters. Yeah. Um. But the good news for GP fans, Highlander folks, is they got Christian Hoffman back. Yeah, good looking ball player. Six foot four, two hundred pounds, sophomore, throwing the ball around. So, you know, I fully expect them to be right back. You know, two spot in this region. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, Jacob Ferguson, uh, Carlos Orr, uh, Levi Hill, Luke Burkett. Uh, you know, he, yeah. he's got a lot of players back, and I think that's going to be a really good opportunity for somebody. He's got a, you know, they're going to have to go into it realistically, knowing that you're going to be chasing Alcoa year in and year out. So, correct. Uh, I, I don't know how many. Veteran coaches are going to want to step into that situation, but that's going to be a real good talent for for an up up and coming young coach. I think. Mm-hmm. I think so too. Lee, we got Pigeon Forge uh, listed as uh, third uh, veteran coach uh, Scott Meadows. He's mm-hmm. now got 147 career victories. This guy's coached uh, all over East Tennessee. He's been at Carter. He's been at Alcoa. He's been at uh, Catholic Sequoia. It's his second trip mm-hmm. to Pigeon Forge. So. Uh, you know, he knows the area well. He's he's uh, been around for a long time, won a lot of ball games, and uh, did a good job getting Pigeon Forge back on track with that 7-4 and four record last year. I think so, too, man. <clears throat> he's got a really good backfield in Mason Schultz and Brady Maples. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then he's got uh, F- Effler out there at wide receiver. Uh, Howard's a sophomore running back. King, another senior wide receiver. The junior running back in Littles, you know, He's got some talent coming back, man. Yeah, no doubt. Got a lot of talent coming back, actually. And Austin East, you know, uh, they had that uh, terrible shooting there. Hearts go out to them. Man. Yeah, that's tough. I think I believe I read they lost uh, five. I think five students to shootings in the last uh, two or three months. So, uh, you know, football is probably kind of on the on the back burner right now. I would assume as it should be. Yeah, with with so much stuff going on over there. Zero and ten last year. Uh, Antonio Mays is, is now in his second year there at uh, East, taking over for Jeff Phillips. And I think Jeff Phillips had a lot to do uh, with, you know, calmer waters. He did. I know uh, he did. He, he was very uh, student-oriented. Uh, he got a lot of respect around the campus. And, and I'm not – this this isn't intended as a shot at Mays. No. Uh, but uh, Coach, Coach Phillips had a lot of respect among the student body over there. Yeah, he also had a lot of respect amongst the coaches. Peers, in that yes, you're right. You're exactly right. Uh, they got they got some players back though, Lee. Always got speed, buddy. Yeah, Austin East uh, always has speed. Uh, Billingsley back at running back. They got Holloway at quarterback. Uh, Davis at linebacker. I don't really know, Lee, if uh, the zero and ten record. I don't know. Uh, were they in games, out of games? If I didn't really check back on their record, uh, were they just, you know. I don't think they were in They many weren't in games. many games. Mm-hmm. They got Fulton, Clinton, uh, Scott, and uh, Brainerd on the non-region uh, end of the schedule this year. Uh, Brainerd's got a new co- – are, are going to have a new coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're still coachless right now, so uh, potentially a win there. Uh, region games are going to be tough. Yes, uh, Union County, the Patriots, uh, Josh Kerr, 0-6 in his first season there. Uh, I think he was the uh, former offensive coordinator. Uh, he's uh, He had a tough tough role to go, kind of like Austin East last year, Lee, but he, he's got some uh, pretty good kids back. Yep, got uh, uh, nicely back. That's the senior running back linebacker combo there. And then Sanford, O-line, D-line, kid, senior. Uh, Simons is back. Dawson's back. A lot of seniors and juniors, man. Yeah. A lot of seniors and juniors. So, hopefully they can get some wins here. And uh, moving on down, uh, lead Northview Academy, uh, Heath Woods, 5-15 in his two years there. 
uh, four and six last year, one and five. And I forgot, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned or not, Union County was a new team to the region. That's right. If, if I did uh, mention that, I'm not sure. They uh, came down from four, eight. Uh, but, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if Northview's going to. But I, I, it's kind of like we said initially. I think this region is one of those top heavy regions mm-hmm. with uh, GP, Pigeon Forge, and obviously Alcoa. I think I don't, the number four spot's wide open. Number four spot's wide open. I agree. And uh, Wright at tackle, uh, Schmidt at linebacker, uh, Cruz at running back, Kirby at wide receiver. They got some kids uh, that got uh, significant playing time last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so who knows? Northview may, uh, may be in the battle for, for, like you say, leave that four spot. Moving on to Region 3, Lee, uh, they lost uh, Red Bank, gained Kingston. Uh, so they'll remain a 16 region. Not a lot of changes in this region. Uh, I think you got to look at Loudon as the uh, team to beat again this year. Wouldn't you oh, agree? yeah, I think so. Jeff Herrig, he's been doing a phenomenal job since he's been back, 34 and 15, 10 and 2 last year, quarterfinals uh, team, you know. And he's got his Keaton Herrig. As a quarterback. Mr. Football, I think, semifinalist last year, That's if right. I remember. That's uh, right. Real smart uh, kid. Not only is he talented, but he's very smart, takes good care of the ball. That's right. Uh, I think Coach Herrig has, uh, would definitely be the odds on, especially with Red Bank moving out of the region. I mm-hmm. think that uh, maybe weakened the, the region to an extent. However, uh, Kingston, not a bad team coming in there. We kind of feel like they're probably going to be the biggest contender for Loudon this year. I think so. Uh, the Yellow Jackets, uh, well, what's your thoughts on them? Uh, I like them, man, at the two spot, actually, Mike. I do. They got a they got a good little – they got Oliver Springs and then the Rockwood Stone Memorial. Uh, I think that's probably two pretty decent out-of-region yeah. uh, competition they'll face. Um, then they got Davis back at uh, linebacker, and then Kalen Collins is back, uh, their junior quarterback. Uh yeah, I like my two, man. I think Coach Panky, he'd be all right. You think he's going to be all right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Brainerd Lee, I, to my knowledge, they are currently coachless. Uh, now, this is Saturday, and, and I've, I told you guys in the earlier shows, uh, we are recording these, so it's April 24th. As of now, uh, Brainerd does not have a head coach. Uh, Tyrus Ward uh, took over the uh, Tanner job, did That's he not? That's correct, yes. So uh, it now uh, Brainerd's without a head coach, seven and five, three and two. So you're going to be walking into a pretty good situation, I would assume, uh, with Dupree, who's listed as an athlete mm-hmm. back, uh, Donovan uh, Thomas at tight end is junior, also a very good football player, Xavier Woods, uh, Demetrius Lachlan. So uh, you know they they got kids back. Uh, the Panthers uh, may be in contention here for for perhaps the second spot. I think so. They got a pretty good little. They're out of region, Bradley Central and Ottawa, man. For two two step ups in competition right there. Guess what I've been forgetting to do, Lee. Oh man. <laughs> for you guys that haven't seen our shows, I did create screens where I put the uh team we had favored for the region we were talking about, but it doesn't do much good if I forget to flip over to them. So <laughs> we'll we'll pick it back up uh from from there. We'll we'll uh, the region one and two folks will just have to forgive my forgetfulness, I guess, Lee. Uh, so we're on to Signal Mountain. Uh, the Eagles, Lee, uh, Josh Roberts, four and five, two and two. Uh, they were knocked out in overtime mm-hmm. against a really good Upperman team, 43 to 41. Uh, thoughts on the Eagles? Uh, I think they can score. They just got to learn how to stop some people. Yeah. They can put points on the board. Um, they got Adkins back at the linebacker spot. Logan Farr back, senior running back. Uh, Corvin Johnson, Duncan Cannon, senior quarterback. <clears throat> and then uh, Jermaine Stinson, the sophomore linebacker coming back. So, And they got Megs. That's a tough little test. You know, and then they play, I think Marion County's in the mix there. Yeah. Uh, that that may help them a little bit in playoffs. There will be those, I'm not saying they can't beat those teams, but those teams are going to give them fits. You know, yeah, they're, so, they're solid, solid two squads. eighteen. That's yeah. right. That they're gonna have to face. So I don't know. We'll see, man. Moving on down, Lee. We got Sweetwater, the Wildcats, five and five last year, one and four. Uh, did not make the playoffs. Uh, only three teams in this current region 
we're in postseason play, obviously, with Red Bank moving out of the region. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sweetwater, uh, Mike Martin, 61 and 55. Uh, uh, overall, he's 12 and 9 in his two years there at Sweetwater. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got uh, Gavin Macon back at running back, uh, Isaac Croft, uh, Jovan Jonkins. Jo- is that Jonkins? How do you say that? That's a weird spelling there. <laughs> uh, I think it's Jonkins. Jonkins, sorry. That's that's an unusual spelling there. My apologies. I'm, that's why I let Lee read the kids' names off most of the time. <laughs> I'm a little too illiterate for some of the spelling, these uh, creative spelling these, these parents have. Of course, that's his last name, but I guess I'd have to blame somebody else for how they spelled their last name. <laughs> uh, but uh, Sweetwater, one and four last year in region play. Lee, uh, obviously, like I say, missed the, the postseason. Uh, do you see them sneaking in, maybe uh, getting in the playoff spot this year? I don't. I don't, Mike. Not Me, right now. Yeah. McMinn Central, the Chargers, uh, Derek Davis, 3-7, and 1-4. Uh, Lee, he's he's got a, a pretty uh, large amount of kids back off last year as well. He does, and they're mostly upperclassmen. Uh, you know, not, uh, Novice Cox back. Uh, Carden is back. Arn Wine. Edmonds, the tailback's a junior. Elrod, the quarterback's a junior. Uh, I just don't think there's any room. So, recap in Region 3, Lee, we like Loudon, we like Kingston uh, to battle it out for the region title. And we think uh, Brainerd, Sweetwater, and uh, obviously Signal Mountain uh, probably battling for that 3 4 spot. Correct. All right. I agree. Well, well let's move on to Region 4, Lee. Uh, region four is uh, went from a six-team region down to a five-team region. They lost Upperman, Smith County, and uh, York had gained Giles County and Community. Community moving up to uh, three eight this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like David O'Connor's uh, Giles County Bobcats to take this region. Uh, what's your thoughts? Man, I do too. But dude, this is one where it did not favor travel. This is one team yeah. that did not. This did not favor them. That's a long haul, dude, from yeah. Giles County to Grundy County or Sequatchie. They petitioned to get moved, uh, Lee, but uh, they didn't. Uh, they didn't win the petition. That is a long, long haul for away games for them. Yeah, it's a long haul for everybody had to go to that, them uh, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but I like Giles to take the region. Yeah, I think the David O'Connor. I think he does a good job, and man, he's got uh, Carden coming back. Chase McElroy's coming back, his tail back, his Cardin's his QB. Yeah. So he's got a good one two punch coming back. And O'Connor, he that he ain't ducking. You know, he's got Page, Cleveland, and Columbia. And Franklin County. So buddy Marty Wheeler. That's right. So I think uh, I think he's traveling to Giles County. Yeah, so I think Coach O'Connor, he's he plays up out of region, puts some tough tough teams on the board. And uh I kinda like that. So I think they're going to be odds on favorites for Region 4 right now. Well, Lee, yeah, there you, you know go. what you forgot to do? There it is. <laughs> You're supposed to keep me straight, man. You ain't doing a very good job with that. Somebody's got to do it right. We usually have our uh, live chat when we're doing this live, and they'll, they'll keep, they'll holler at me and Lee, change your screen, change your screen. <laughs> <laughs> we forget to do it. I don't have anybody keeping us straight today, so uh, – We'll, uh, we'll try to keep up with it. Sequatchie County, our buddy Mark Wattenberger, of course, he uh, came over from Stone Memorial, uh, Stone Memorial League three years ago. He's 16 and 16 uh, there at Sequatchie, 2 and 7, 1 and 3. Kind of struggled a little bit last year, as a lot of teams did. Mm-hmm. You know, had some COVID issues. Uh, Harley Meeks returns, Austin McCurry, uh, Casey McDaniel at cornerback. They got uh, Kobe Turner at running back, Levi Knight at running back. And Peyton Campbell, the junior quarterback. So, uh, boy, do you, you see any movement here? Or I think his record will be better. I think his record will be better. I, I, do. I, I do too. Uh, they, they, however, uh, you know, he's got he's picked up some pretty from some pretty talented teams. He's got South Pittsburgh uh, traveling to South Pittsburgh. Actually, he's got Marion County, mm-hmm. Jackson County, Bledsoe County, Whitwell, and White County. So, I, I see. Uh, maybe three, possibly four, uh, four non-region games that uh, they could potentially win. Yeah, they could pick up three or four wins. And uh, possibly three uh, region wins, so uh, maybe seven, seven and three. Very, very possible. Very possible, seven and three, six and four, somewhere mm-hmm. around in that range. 
uh, Grundy County uh, Lee, the Yellow Jackets, uh, two and eight last year. Uh, they did make the playoffs, lost to a Red Bank 50 to six there in the first round. Mm -hmm. uh, under new management, Nick Bryant takes over for uh, Tracy Hayworth. Uh, team has struggled the last two or three years. Man, Lee. that's absolutely killed that Grundy <clears throat> County, though. They change coaches like people change underwear, man. <laughs> it is just. You gotta get some consistency. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, tough. and and I think if they can just get consistency to work on building this program back, I don't think they're anywhere near where they need to be. Well, they had the big scandal. You remember yeah, two or three years ago? Something and, going and, on, man. Yeah. They just need to get just focused and settled down and and just be consistent. I think it was a hazing incident then or something. I don't remember all the details, but I'm sure that. Uh, that set them back a little bit when all that uh, went down. That's right. Cannon County, uh, Lee, the Lions, Matt Daniels, 8-21 uh, is three years there at Cannon County. 0-9, uh, 1-4, uh, uh, COVID region win over Grundy County, only win they got credited with. Uh, I don't know. I, I I hate it because Cannon County's fan base is so great, and I, I really think Matt Daniels is the guy uh, – you know, if anybody's going to get things turned around there, I really like him. He, he'd been successful. I think he missed the playoffs, uh, was it year before last, mm -hmm. by a game. By one game. Uh, I think they – I want to say they had a forfeit of games. Does that sound right? And would yeah, have been in? He, he's he's got to get numbers. That's, that's what's yeah. killing him right now. He don't have the numbers. They've got a great fan base there. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, they love the lines over there in Cannon County and – and I think if Matt Daniels hangs around, and, and I suspect he will, I mean, he was an assistant there. Uh, I think he's, he may have been a, he's an alum, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. I believe he graduated. So I expect him to stick around. I think uh, better things are on the horizon. I think they get I think they get in the playoffs first time uh, this year, Lee, in a long time. It's possible. Like I said, he's just got to get numbers, man. That's a – you know, when you're lining up against Giles County and Giles County, you look across the field and Giles County got 55 players. You know, and you're yeah. you're running with thirty. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a little difficult. Well, community joins uh, and communities another team. I don't think they've ever made a playoff uh, game lead, so they'll never get a better opportunity. They're in a five-team region with, uh, you know, a couple of teams struggling. So that's, that's right. You know, it's uh, they. Uh, I think Chris Grimes has got as good a chance as he's going to get uh, at, at a postseason spot, being in this region mm -hmm. he's in now. Uh, Dallas Grooms, who I assume is his son, is a quarterback. Uh, John Stanley at split back. Uh, Silva is wide receiver. Uh, Reed uh, listed as another quarterback. And uh, Hugler and Bowling, uh, linebacker and the wide receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, got some kids there uh, that can play. He might be able to slide into that slide four. Slide into the four spot. <laughs> well, as a community alum myself, I hope he does, Lee. I'd like to see the old uh, Vikings get a playoff game. I think he can slide into that. All right, Lee, let's move on. Oh, dead gummit. I didn't do it, did I? Yeah, I did. Okay. I did change the screen. Well, let's change the screen again, Lee. Let's move on into Region 5. Mm -hmm. uh, region 5, I think uh, – a lot of changes in this region as well. Uh, they lost Pearl Cone, uh, Giles County, White's Creek, uh, gained Maplewood, Smith County, and Jackson County. They remain a five-team region, but it's a considerably different five-team region. This, this, like I said, I think across the state, the region alignment was a good thing. Yeah. Region 4 and Region 5, 3A are twisted. Yeah. Bad. Well, that's what you was talking about with Giles County. Why would – I mean – well, I know. I know they didn't want a four-team region, and I'm sure that's why they stuck them over, you know, in Region Four. But you take Smith County out of Region Four and put them in Region Five, which is a uh, right next to Cannon County. I mean, they border each other. It would have made, yeah, I agree. It would have made a heck of a lot more sense to have those two. Uh, uh, Jackson County was the same way. Yeah. You know, but I don't like I said. I don't know why. I don't either. Uh, but it doesn't make good sense. I, I agree with you there, my partner. East Nashville, the Eagles, uh, I think, uh, should should take this region lead based on talent. Uh, oh, yeah, I think so, hands down. They, they typically have a, a very uh, a large amount of uh, a athletes there at that school. Tons. Uh, Jamal Stewart, uh, in his uh, first year, went 5-2. and two. Of course, they were one of the Metro teams that had to 
suffer through the restrictions with the COVID that uh, Metro Mayor John Cooper put on them, and uh, mm-hmm. they got a late start. And I think that hurt them a lot. Well, I'm sure it hurt all those teams. It really hurt uh, East Nashville. They were loaded last year, if you'll remember. Well, let's just uh, – I think they're still loaded. I think they're still loaded. Who they got back? Well, they got Fletcher, that big defensive tackle, man. He's 6'2", 335, and then Willie Wilson, who's a special player at wide receiver. But if you, you look at Coach Stewart's out of region, Father Ryan, Division Two, Stewart's Creek, 6A, Hillsboro, Perennial Power and 5, Independence, 6A, Green Hill, 6A, Riverdale, 6A. Yeah. He must think he can match up. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a heck of a non-region uh, schedule there. Uh, if they can, yeah, squad. if they can get through that without any injuries, they're going to be tough to handle, I think, in the postseason. I think so, too, buddy. I think they've got a ton of talent over there. Stratford Lee, we've got them listed as our number two team. Thomas Porter, uh, he sits at 15 and 16 in his three years there at Stratford. Uh, two and five last year, one and two again. Another team, I think, that suffered uh, a lot with the uh, Davidson County restrictions on high school football. Uh, lost 33 to 29 to Stewart County in uh, Stewart County in the first round. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got some kids back, Lee. He does. He's got Stovall back, Ford back, uh, Carlton Williams, Diarco Perkins, McAllister. Uh, it's a running back senior. You know, quite a few seniors on this team. Uh, Keelan Jenkins, I think, is his quarterback. He's a junior. Uh, Stratford typically, lately, you know, they've been kind of up and down. I don't, you know, they've been kind of struggling. So, it'll be interesting to see how they handle this. Yeah, they went to, what was it, the quarters? Maybe the semis <laughs> as recently as uh, two or three years ago, Lee. You know, they went in uh, to postseason with a losing record, went on a run. I think they won, I want to say three, maybe two. They tailback. Yeah. Uh, they, they got, uh, matter of fact, I think that was Porter's first year. Mm-hmm. As coach, uh, they got to – it was either the quarters or the semis. My memory's not uh, helping me out now. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, they're uh, they're well coached. I, I really think that COVID stuff really set them back. I don't know what they were allowed to do. I assume they were still allowed in the weight room. But beyond that, they weren't allowed to do anything until I think it was, what, week four last year mm-hmm. before they were allowed to start back to playing. So, I mean, you just – you can't read too much into what happened last year for these Metro teams. That's right. Maplewood, uh, Lee, to my knowledge, is another team. I don't think they've had a new coach. Uh, Arcente Broom uh, stepped aside. Where did he go, Lee? Hmm. I can't remember. Uh, coach Broom's a buddy of ours. He didn't go to Hillsboro. Uh, maybe Overton, possibly. Was it Overton? Man, I can't remember. I'll have to check my notes. But anyway, they're, they're coachless as of now. Uh, the uh, – Panthers, 0-5 last year, 0-3, and, and again, another Metro team that uh, uh, dealt with the, the restrictions. But they've got uh, – well, I don't guess they got Alex Broom because I'm assuming that's the relation to Coach, wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. I got him listed as a returning player, but I'd say he's probably wherever uh, Coach Broom is now. Just guessing. Uh, Javantes Greer, uh, Marcus Ellis, uh, big guard, junior guard. Mm-hmm. Greer is a running back. Harris, uh, the wide receiver, DB. Cannon, uh, defensive end. Winston at free safety. Got a lot of kids back, Lee. They do. Uh, I, I, th- I think they get off the snide and win some games. They got Hunters Lane, Mount Juliet, uh, Overton, Friendship Christian, Clarksville, and, and Kane Ridge as uh, non region games. Pretty tough. Uh, Oh, that's a four, a five, a five, a private, a five, six. And a six. Yeah. So, they may not pick up any non-region games. Yep. <laughs> the wins. Smith County, Lee, uh, uh, over in your old stomping ground. Uh, yep. got a, that's what you were just talking about, man. They can't get any consistency at the coaching spot. I got a new coach again this year. Uh, Scott Murray was there for a couple of years. He's gone now. Matt Dyer comes in. Uh, another former Smith County player, I believe, was he? Yes, he? sir. He was on – I think he was on the same the team. They made a couple of quarterfinals and then a semifinal run when he was there. Was he Maynard? Yeah, he played for Coach Maynard. But his father, Coach Dyer, uh, was at Macon County for a while, and he was probably one of the best defensive minds, uh, defensive coaches I believe I've ever seen his dad was. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he comes from a coaching pedigree. But – Matt has been at Trousdale County. 
<clears throat> for a while now. So you okay. know, you know, he's taking what he's learned there on how to win. I think this is a good hire for Smith County. I do. Good, good. I think he'll be there for a little while, but they're going to have to give, be patient with him. And then they're going to have to last this region and then get out of this thing. they got to get out of this region. Yeah. Get back towards home, get some natural rivalries. Because if you look, he's got six out of nine games this year on the road. Yeah. That's... Well, I hate to say this, but when you're trying to run a program, playing East Nashville, Stratford, and Maplewood, when they come to your place, you ain't getting any gate. Yeah, I got you. So – he needs to get some natural rivalries back. I think if they'll hang with him for a couple of years, they'll they'll get back. But he's got some talent, man. I think, you know, I'll be honest with you, Mike, we got him sitting. I think he's at the three spot myself. Three spot. I do. I think well, he's I, I didn't. This was another one in regions. There were so many Metro teams in it, and you don't really know. Yeah, I, think I didn't really know where to put them at, to be honest with you. I think, I think they're a postseason team. I, know, I think so, too. And he's got some really good kids coming back. Jackson County, Lee, uh, Sean Loftus does a great job. They're playing up this year. They were, of course, in with Watertown and Trousdale County last mm -hmm. year. Uh, you know, it's 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 a couple of really good teams in this region, but I think they have a chance to be competitive in this region. I do, too. I think Smith and Jackson could be 3-4. Yeah, very, very I think possible. So. it's possible. Yeah. Will Flanagan at running back, uh, Birdwell. It returns at running back. Uh, Eli Biggs, a senior, also back. Caldwell, junior back. So, he's got some kids back. Uh, I look for them, uh, Lee, like you said, to be in contention for, for a postseason spot this year. Mm -hmm. All right. Did I did I change my flag, Lee? I did. It come. That's, that's pretty good. That's three in a row. Let's go ahead and make it four in a row. Waverly and uh, Upperman. I'm sorry. That's not Upperman, Lee. Fairview. That's Fairview. I saw the B. <laughs> sorry about that, Chris. You used was the wrong B. <laughs> uh, Waverly and Fairview, I think, are, are probably the two teams that are going to compete uh, to win this title. Uh, Chris Hughes and Randall Bolden, a couple of regulars on the Friday main event. Two great coaches uh, leave. Waverly was 10-3 and last year, 4-0 and in their region. Of course, they're playing up now. They were in 2A. Move up to 3A, uh, got knocked out by Peabody in the semifinals last year, but uh, he's got some kids back, doesn't he, Lee? Oh, yeah, he's got Ryan Edwards back. Uh, Jacob Dooley's back as the quarterback. Ethan McCann. Uh, he tra he's the transfer, remember, from, from Lewis, Lewis County. County. Yeah. And he's good. He's really good. Uh, so, uh, I, I like Coach Bolden probably to take the region right now. I do. I think it's going to be tough. Uh, you know, you never can count uh, Fairview out. Chris Hughes does a tremendous job over there. He's uh, 105 and, and 37 in his 12 years. So he's won a lot of games over there. Uh, he's reached that century mark, which, you know, that's kind of a milestone for coaches, I think, in high school football. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, of course, he reached that last year with that 7-3 and three record. Uh, I, I meant to text him when he got that, and I forgot. But, uh, you know, it, it's uh, big for him to get that 100th win last year, and I think they're going to be competitive again this year. They got mm -hmm. Grant back at uh, strong safety, uh, also plays running back. Edmondson at wide receiver, uh, Connor Ferris at tackle, Kendrick Curtis at linebacker, Ethan Hamilton at tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, Mays McCoy is listed as a sophomore quarterback. I don't know if he's going to move into that position. Or Pendergrass. Or, or Pendergrass. I think they'll be competing for it. Uh, but I think Fairview's going to be right there. Uh, but uh, I agree with you. I think Waverly may have a slight edge, uh, especially picking up Ethan McCann. I think it might have knocked them, kicked them over the top. But it's going to be a competitive region, and then you can't uh, count Stewart's County out. Remember, they knocked uh, Fairview off, uh, I think it was in week 10 or 11 last year, or maybe in the last game of the season, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. For the region title, Stewart County uh, kind of caught us by surprise. They sure did. Uh, uh, Chance uh, Swartz there, 21 and 32 in his five years uh, with the Rebels. Had his big uh, best year last year, 10 and 2. Uh, he's got some kids back, didn't he? Sure does. He's got a quarterback, Will Page, back, senior. Uh, Natero's back. Wallace, McWhorter, Marsh, Reed, and, and uh, Lagman. And that's all seniors and juniors, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, they got playing time last year. Yep. They, they made the quarterfinal run. Exactly. Uh we may be knocking on Mr. Hughes' door there, Fairview. <laughs> That's quite possible. Uh, White House Heritage Lee, another new addition this region. I, I don't think I think I failed to mention that, but Harpeth, Camden, 
out of region out of region six now waverly white house heritage and white house uh, move into region six and uh both uh, heritage and uh white house are, are down they, they were 4a last year down in uh, or enrollment lee dropped down to 3a uh stetson dick dickerson's done a really good job there uh with the patriots seven and four last year four and two what's your thoughts on them uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they do in 3A. Uh, Sumner County or White House Heritage over in there, that's Robertson, Sumner, right on the line. Yeah. Uh, White House, obviously, there in Sumner County, but there's a lot of talent over there, a lot of talent in that area, and it's growing so fast. So I, that was what surprised me is these schools dropped enrollment because mm-hmm. uh, it is a lot of growth in that area. Right. But – anyways i i kind of like the patriots and dickerson but man white house tradition they're not gonna stay down long so i'm I'm gonna be interested to see i don't know why there's been so much uh, turnover there at uh, sycamore lee Uh, they got a new coach again and john Mm -hmm. harrison takes over he was assistant coach last year of course mark hall was only there for one year i think he took over for our buddy coach robson after he left uh, War Eagles, uh, one and eight last year in, uh, Coach Hall's, uh, one season as head coach. Uh, they got Havens, Webb, uh, Bramlett, Biggs, and, uh, Golf back. Any, any way they move up any off of that one and eight record? I don't know, man. I think the region got tougher, to be honest with you, with the three additions, uh, yeah. White, Heritage, uh, White House, and Waverly. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be tougher for them to get, uh, any improvement coming into this year. Tough region. It's real, real even, real balanced region. Mm-hmm. I think. Uh, not, same, not, same for Cheatham County. Yeah, exactly. Cheatham County, the Cubs, zero and ten last year. Zero and five. Uh, they've got Cooper Owen back at quarterback, uh, but uh, Gary Halstead at thirty-eight and forty-seven. He was a zero and zero and ten in his first year there at Cheatham County. Of course, he came over from. He was a former head coach at Sycamore. Hmm. I don't know, buddy. I don't think they move up any. Lee. Just to be honest so with you. I can't see it. You can't see it either. Well, Lee, let's flip on over here to uh, Region 7 and talk about Region 7 a little bit real quick. And that's another region. It's always tough. Every year's tough. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it got tougher or easier this year because uh, you had a lot of additions and a lot of subtractions. You lost South Gibson. You lost Milan. lost Westview. And McNary Central, you gained Dyersburg, Ripley, Millington, and Bolton. So, I mean, on the surface, I would say, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. It's tough to say. What's your thoughts? Mm. Dyersburg was a tough addition, but, you know, getting South Gibson, Milan, and Westview out of there, I think. Uh, yes. It may have made Covington a little. Covington, I think, went from having two or three teams that could potentially beat them to uh, one. One. I yeah, agree. I think this is a two-headed monster right now in the region. Yeah. Seven, Dyersburg and Covington. Uh, Coach Stowe, man, he's done a good job at Dyersburg. And he's got Harris, preseason All-State fullback, coming back. And uh, he's got a he's got a pretty good little out-of-region out of, out of uh, region schedule with Dyer County, Mumford, and Peabody. Yeah. Um, but he's got some games that he'll be heavily favored in as well. That's right. Uh, MLK prep yeah. beat uh, you know Booker T. Mm-hmm. So uh, <clears throat> I think I think they probably improve on that six and three record. I uh, just think they're well coached. Dar- yeah, they Dar-Sburg are. Dyersburg is well coached. They're always they're always there in the postseason. Uh, as is uh, Covington. You know our buddy J.R. Kirby. They do a heck of a job mm-hmm. there for the Charger team. Uh, he's thirty four and twelve overall, nineteen and five. In his two years after taking over for Marty Wheeler, done a good job, man. Done a Coach real. Kirby's done a real good job. They got facilities, man. They got his got new weights in there. You know those kids are going to be fired up about all that. I think he's going to get them working hard. And like I said, I think uh, this is a two headed race right here. Well, they'll be hungry, Lee, because if you'll remember, they were forced to forfeit to Milan last year mm-hmm. in that. Uh, Potential rematch at Milan is uh, always some bad blood there, mm-hmm. and uh, with them getting that COVID uh, force, uh, you know, lost that that game there. Mm-hmm. That, that I think they're going to be really hungry to get this season started. Uh, Cooper Barbie at linebackers back, Jamarian Dow. Uh, they got AC Mason Mason Dash Young Mason mm-hmm. Young. Mm-hmm. 
uh, linebacker Torres Smith at uh, running back, Christian Barbie at linebacker. Cooper and Christian uh, Lee, what do you know about those kids? They're, they're both listed as seniors. Yeah, Are they I twins? They're twin brothers. That's to be twins, wouldn't it? Tanner Stewart's back. He's quarterback senior. You know, uh, Poteet's back. Fane's back. A lot of seniors and juniors right there, buddy. Yeah. Off of some winning. They've done some, a lot of winning in their careers. Yes, so. they have. A couple of state uh, appearances. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think Coach Kirby's in good shape. That's going to be, a, like you say, that's going to be a tough race between uh, them and the Trojans. I, I expect them two to be on top. Uh, you can't count Ripley out. Ripley's got a good squad. They're entering this region. They were 4A, dropping down to 3A Lee, 7-5 uh, and five last season, 2-2. Two and two. Justin Cruz, 17-27 mm-hmm. uh, in his four years with the Tigers. Uh, they were knocked out by Haywood in the quarterfinals. But it was a 17-3 to three game, and Haywood wound up going on to the state title. That's right. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think you can count Ripley out. I think they're going to be a contender here as well in this Region 7. Uh, I think so. I think, you know, I think they're a solid squad. They'd be an upset if yeah. they, they broke into that top two. But I, I think I, they're solid. Yeah, and they got a lot of kids back. Got a lot of seniors is what I like about them. They got Edler at, at uh, uh, split back. Uh, DeAndre Smith, the defensive ta- tackle. Uh, Turner Crowder at linebacker. Uh, Hyde at tight end. Mm-hmm. Markham at uh, cornerback, and then they got Lattimore at defense end. A lot of seniors. You see senior after every one of these names. Anytime you have a veteran squad that played in a quarterfinal game the year before, that's right. You can't count them out. Well, they're going to be a tough out. They're going to be a tough they're out. A tough out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Millington, another team coming down from four A to three A. Uh, Lee three and eight last year, two and one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were knocked out by this Dyersburg team uh, last year, so. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they, they may potentially squeeze in there and, and battle for that fourth spot. I, I, I feel pretty comfortable about the top three spots, but I think Millington and uh, probably Bolton will be battling for that. Uh, and, and remember, Bolton didn't get to play last year. That's correct. Uh, so, well, yeah, so we don't, you don't, know. don't know how they're going to do, do coming off of a season with no football. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got Elvis Simpson at quarterback. Uh, but, you know, like I say, how are they going to respond to having, you know, uh, what, right. uh, however many months off, 16 months off, not uh, touching the football. Yeah, and then now uh, you got and Bolivar Central. Too, so. Bolivar Central, 0-9, 0-3, struggled a lot. Uh, under new management, Woodrow Lowe steps aside. They got uh, Montreal Kraft comes in. He was a uh, 3-16 and in two pre- – I guess I'm assuming that's two previous years he coached at Bolivar. Lee, I didn't – I'm not real clear on my notes on that one. I'm assuming he must have coached there. Uh, this must be a second stint, mm-hmm. just judging by my terrible notes here. <laughs> uh, but I'm showing him as the new coach, so I'm I'm assuming this is his second stint there. Right. Got to make better notes, Lee. Got to make better notes. That's hokey looking smart, having good notes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the only chance well, I've I never, got. I've never looked smart. Uh, I might have sounded smart yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, but. yeah, me and you both. Huh? I'm, I'm probably one of the dumbest guys you ever meet, but I typically take ter- pretty good notes. So I'll come across as knowing what I'm talking about anyway. Uh, Region 8, Lee Teat, uh, this is another, like our, our first two classifications we talked about, uh, none of these teams played football last year, so it's it's really – uh, a total, you know, shot in the dark as to who you think is going to dominate this region. We've, we've got Douglas at the top. Uh, don't really have a reason why. Just based off of what they did a couple of years ago, they are moving up from 2A. Yep. Uh, what's your thoughts on Douglas? Uh, like I said, I don't have any thought really on any of these teams because uh, I don't have anything to go off of from last season. Right. I know they got Gallard back, you know, as a tackle, as a senior, and then Damian Mitchell's a senior uh, QB. Mm-hmm. Uh, but any team in Shelby County yeah. typically got talent. We think Riley, Egypt, uh, yes. Delvin Lane uh, probably going to contend. The Pharaohs going to contend for this reason. They're typically a pretty good squad. Mm-hmm. Memphis East moves all the way up from 1A to 3A, and uh, that's another team. Uh, you know, they've had recent success. Mm-hmm. Uh Katari McDonald, uh, uh, excuse me, Katari Donald uh, is uh, leading that team. And then you got a new head coach at Trez Vant, uh, Anton, Antoine uh, Wellington. Uh, mm-hmm. He, uh, no, wait a minute, I'm sorry, Lee, he's out. My apologies. He is out. He was there. He's out. I don't think they've named a replacement yet. There's another bad 
mess up them notes, Lee. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're 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 looking for a coach right now, and they're moving up from two a in a Transvan. We know what kind of uh, history they've got. You That's know, right. been in multiple state titles uh, in recent years, so you know the talents there. Uh, just uh, got to get the right guy to head of the ship, I That's guess. Right. Sheffield, uh, another team here in Region 8, Lee. Uh, don't know a lot about the Knights, unfortunately. Uh, and then uh, well, Memphis Business Academy, they haven't even set up a huddle account yet, which that's where I, I pull my name from. If I don't know much about a team, I, they don't even have a huddle account. So I, I couldn't get any information at all on them. And then Hamilton, uh, Lee, uh, Antoine Moore was 0-10 in his one year at Hamilton. Uh what kind of logo do you put for the executives? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Memphis Business you know, A guy in a tie, maybe. I, executives. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, I don't know. I didn't look that up. Lee, you caught me off guard with that one. <laughs> Check out that logo. I'm not real sure if I even swapped that over, did I? Yeah. Region, region yeah, I did. And so, Douglas is who we got. Well, Lee, let's uh, recap uh, quickly uh, what we got going on here in 3A and that uh, recap doesn't typically take too long when you're talking about 3A, uh, Alcoa. I think Alcoa out of the east. Alcoa out of the east. And who do you like over on the uh, other side of the state? I'm I'm thinking potentially the, the winner comes out of Region 6 or Region 7 where you got Covington, Dyersburg, and then you got Waverly, Fairview. Uh, I could see one of those four teams. Uh, east Nashville could slip in based on talent alone. Who do you like on the uh, west side? I think it's going to come down between East Nashville and somebody else. Really? Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to think. I, I think the representative is going to come out of Region Seven. I think either uh, either the Trojans or Covington. Uh, well, I think my semifinals is going to be East Nashville versus somebody from Region Six or Seven. Region Seven. That'd be Region Seven because uh, five and six would go to the quarterfinals. Uh, I don't know. I like Waverly. I like Fairview. I like uh, Covington, and I, I like uh, Dyersburg. I think the, I think it's gonna come out of those four. Yeah. But who knows? It's gonna be wide open. All right, Lee. This has been the Friday Main Event Class Three A Region Preview. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're gonna uh, continue on with the shows uh, tomorrow night. We'll have Class Four A, mm -hmm. and uh, as always, always we appreciate Coach T. Uh, and his support of uh, Friday Main Event. And uh, we hope you guys will stick with us, man. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, we'd appreciate you uh, becoming a subscriber. That's the only way uh, YouTube has uh, to track the success of a, ch a station or a channel is uh, subscribers. So help us out with that, man. Uh, down there at the bottom, click that subscribe button, and we'll be back tomorrow night, right, Lee? Yes, sir. All right, we appreciate you guys. For Lee Teed, I'm Mike Motor. We're signing out.